Why try beat your opponent when you can just time him out? Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we are going to be talking about store comps or rather more modern store comps. Back in the day, I made a Tamaki store video and although it kind of holds up now, especially for like the later BAs and PAs, typically speaking, there are a lot more options nowadays and like, so I wanted to introduce them to you. I think in the top 100 of my bracket, there are actually like a whole variety of store comps. And so that's really exciting to see. Exciting because I can introduce you to them, not because like they're like, ultra strong or anything. And so with that being said, guys, let's jump right into the video and I'm just going to go through the store comps that are like present in our top 100. If my top 100 is missing any, I will go cover them later, but like we've actually got a quite a variety here. To be honest, I think even last week we only had like one or two store comps and like so this is a pretty good thing. Okay, so before we get into the comps themselves, I want to talk about more around the theory around all of this. The idea of a store comp of any store comp is that you want to outlast the opponent. There are a lot of different ways to do this, whether it be like single target healing or like defense ups or taunts and and stuff like that. Typically speaking, like stores are quite easy to beat these days. However, if you do run into them unknowingly, aka P Arena, then stores a lot of the time are actually going to work. And so therefore, it's not really in Battle Arena where these store comps shine. It's actually in Princess Arena when you like take them by surprise. However, after somebody has hit you in P Arena, they already know your comp. They know it's a stall. And typically speaking, stall is going to be pretty easy to beat. Okay, so with that introduction, hopefully you guys will understand kind of like the goals behind the stall. And so let's run through a few examples. This one here is what we refer to to as the summer cock rose stall. And so as you can see here, there are a lot of the elements that I just talked about. You've got tanks who have a lot of self-sustain as well as like being able to resist a lot of damage. And then in summer cock rose, as well as maho, you've got massive single target healing. And then there's this kind of like stray Tamaki here. However, Tamaki always has a purpose when she is paired up with Miyako. Miyako's one massive weakness is magic. And so like to fight against magic, you have Tamaki. Tamaki essentially makes it so like people should think twice about running mage melts or like even mages generally. Typically speaking, if you're going to run a store with Miyako in it, you are going to be looking for Tamaki as well. Tamaki and potentially Arisa, but to be honest, I don't think anyone uses Arisa on defense. Tamaki is just so good at sniping those Kyokas, sniping those Ilias, sniping those Samakiaros, and so it's a massive, massive deterrent against magical teams. So imagine that this comp did not have the Tamaki in it. Instead, it had a Yukari, and that variant definitely exists. So what that means is that you're trading out like the anti-mage for a little bit of extra single target healing, as well as some TP boost and like an AoE magic shield. To be honest, the single target healing is what gets everyone. So like if you can imagine Maho, Samakokoro, and Yukari all single target healing like the front line, it just always comes in clutch. Like to be honest, against like a Ninon fan, I'm pretty sure a duo team with just a Miyako and a Maho is enough to stand up against that Ninon team. And so back to this comp over here. So obviously you got the Miyako for like the physical resistance. On top of that, you got Maho's blind on the second place of the enemy team. Maho also provides AoE physical defense as well as single target healing and TP boosting. All of these are so perfect for stall. After that, what you've got is Kuka who excels at the magical defense and on top of that she taunts and the taunt is actually a really really important part about beating these comps and then we've got as I explained the Tamaki to counter any mages coming in that will like melt this Miyako and then Summer Kokoro who is providing buffs as well as like the big single target heals on the UB on top of that however Summer Kokoro does do like the backflip up to the front and take some damage so that is also really nice as well to be honest and so therefore how exactly do you beat this team typically speaking against stores you have a bunch of like really core characters I'm talking about Jun, Kari Makoto so Akari, Samakiaru, and then on top of that, we also have Kuka, we also have Suzuna, as well as Shiori, and then also Mitsuki, Monica, like all of these are very, very valid options for fighting that. Uh, we've got the Kyoka, I don't know if I mentioned her yet, as well as any other mages that you could potentially have, perhaps Anna, if you do have her and you don't have any other mages. And so with that in mind, let's go back over to this team over here. The first thing that you need to know is that to counter the Tamaki and the Miyako, you need to use either a Kuka or a Nozomi plus Monica combo. All right, guys, so let's start working on this counter. So like I mentioned before, to battle this one, you would either use a Kuka or a Nozomi plus a Monica combo. And so the reason you need Kuka or the Nozomi plus Monica combo is because you need to give your mages enough time to kill the Miyako before the Tamaki gets to them. Typically speaking, if your mages or mage has killed the Miyako, they can like then die off. Okay, and so what I would do is probably use a Kyoka or if you don't have a Kyoka, I would use a Summer Kiaru. Like I was saying in my Summer Kiaru video, they are kind of replaceable. However, if you have two of them, them, it's even kind of like better. However, the downside of this is that you then only have like slot for one physical DPS. I personally don't like running this because it actually takes up like a bit too many slots. And so with Kuka or even Jun, you can actually run the Kaori and Makoto combo. And so if you do something like that, these two characters actually take care of that Kuka. And then so what we need next is then a way to deal with the Miyako then. And to kill the Miyako, typically speaking, I'm going to be using defense down. So I'm a big fan of something like this or potentially like a Kyoka instead of this Samakiaru over here. 
I've actually run this comp like many, many times and I'm pretty sure it's going to work on that. As for the replacement for Kyoka, I don't think that you can actually use Anna or Hatsune or even Kiaru. I think the only replacement for Kyoka is probably Summer Kiaru and the reason is because they have that massive, massive burst on their UB. What always happens in these scenarios is that the Tamaki always hits your Kyoka or your Summer Kiaru twice. And thanks to the Tamaki, the Kyoka or the Summer Kiaru actually gains enough TP to kill off that Miyako in one UB. And typically speaking, not all the time, like normally your Summer Kiaru or your Kyoka is supposed to be able to get their UB off before that Tamaki gets her UB off to kill off that mage. And so in that scenario, your Kyoka is going to kill off the Miyako and then like your Tamaki is going to kill off the Kyoka. After the Miyako is dead, you've then got your Kari and the Makoto to take care of this Kuka. Now this is really, really interesting because you see me running a Kari into a Maho. And what I just said was that Maho was literally made to counter like position two physical units, right? Because of the blind. And so why exactly am I running the Kari into this then? It is because the Kuka's taunt actually takes the blind from Maho. And this is some really, really big brain tech that I learned very, very early on. Essentially because Kuka takes the blind from Maho, not all of them, but most of them, I'd say about like 90% of them, your Kari is actually free to UB into that Kuka and Kuka is going to melt so, so fast. And by the time Kuka melts, the rest is history because you're going to be taking down the Tamaki in like a few shots and then the Summer Kokoro and then the Maho. Typically speaking, that's how it works out without any like of the speed modifiers. So like Monica or Kokoro. And so yeah, this is probably like the kind of team that I would use to beat it. However, like I like Summer Kiaru these days because it gives a chance to deal a little bit more damage onto the Kuka. And so guys, lastly, I forgot to talk about the Akari, but Akari is essentially there for two reasons. First of all, she is giving us the assurance that that Miyako is going to die from our like UB from the mage. And so after that, the Tamaki is going to like snipe our mage in the back line. And then like the Tamaki is looking for her next target. The next target is going to be Kuka or Akari. Kuka because of the taunt, Akari because of the magic attack. And so if Akari can actually like take that Tamaki UB, then it gives us like the freedom for our Kari and Makoto to, to just like plow through the rest of that team. And so if the Akari ends up taking the UB from Tamaki, this means that the UB from Tamaki is not going to our Kari or our Makoto. I'm just hedging against the chance of the Kuka not being able to taunt that Tamaki UB. However, by the time Akari dies, like we've probably already breached into the Tamaki anyway. And so from there, your Makoto and Kari should just be able to steamroll the rest. And so like this kind of logic, even like this kind of team comp is actually going to work for a lot of different stalls. Actually, on top of that, I do want to raise the requirement of this Kuka. So Kuka needs to be strong enough to be able to tank like Tamaki ults. And so typically this means that your Kuka does need to be five stars. However, you could definitely give it a try at like four stars or something. Okay, so next I want to talk about this team over here. And so this is actually the team that I used to use all the time. And I used to run this into like every single stall team that I saw. And it actually used to like always work. I say used to because typically speaking, I run this about like 70% of the time. But when I'm feeling a little bougie, I do run something like this. And so again, the logic behind this one is that the Nozomi and the Monica are going to get the Nozomi's UB off right before the Tamaki gets her UB off. And so what that means is that the Tamaki is going to UB into the Nozomi and then so your Kyoka is free to UB into this freaking Miyako. So you'll notice that we don't have the Akari to give us that like assurance of like the Miyako dying. However, what we do have in this team instead is the Monica, which gives us like a massive attack speed boost as well as like the M attack and the P attack. And so with all of that combined, typically speaking, the Kyoka UB is enough to take out that Miyako. And so after that, how exactly do we breach the rest of the team? So it's actually really interesting because as you can see, we actually have three sources technically of like cleave damage. We've got Nozomi whacking the front line. We've got Monica doing the UB on the front line and we've got Mitsuki doing the UB on the front line as well as the curse. So Mitsuki is actually really, really important because of A, the defense down, but also B, the curse. And for you guys who don't know, curse does true damage, damage over time. And it is just like so good at tank killing. Mitsuki is definitely a contributor to killing off that Miyako. And so I don't think that she is replaceable. So again, back to the scenario, Miyako is dead and so we've got Kuka left. Kuka is going to die really, really fast, especially to the Monica, the Mitsuki and the Shiori. However, these days I actually don't use Shiori. I actually use Susuna because Susuna typically speaking UBs and one hit kills the Kuka. And so if the Miyako and the Kuka are down, then it's all like freaking gravy from here. You're just going to be chunking the rest of this team. The heals from this team is just not enough to like stop all of this. And so yeah, these are kind of like two team comps that you can try against stalls. Typically speaking, it's going to work against a lot of stalls. And so with that being said, I'm going to go pick up another stall. And so what we have is this one over here here is Summer Suzume stall. So this is really interesting. There is an insane amount of single target healing in this team. However, the Miyako is no longer protected by that Tamaki. And so what I would actually run is something like this. So Jun or Kuka, you've got the Kaori, you've got the Makoto, you've got this girl, and then you got this girl over here. And again, this can be replaced with this one. Why I would run this is because this is like essentially a fully offensive team. Now I did say that the reason that you run Kuka over here is like so that you can catch that Maho blind. However, what is actually really interesting is that I think the first
first or the second Kari Yubi. I'm pretty sure it's the first Kari Yubi. That Kari Yubi is actually unblinded. So just like how timelines work right now, the interactions between Maho and the Kari, it's just that Kari is not blinded when she punches into that freaking Kuka. However, if you add a little bit of action speed, it actually screws things up because I believe the Kari does end up getting blinded. And so yeah, for a comp like this, like you can already see the core is like pretty much the same. You're taking as much like shred as you can and then you're just tearing it all apart. One variation of this comp that I personally see a lot is actually with Misato. So Misato, typically speaking, you're going to be like seeing her over here and it's essentially the same thing, right? And so I would actually run the exact same team into it. It's the same team because it's still like a little bit of single target healing, a bit of like AoE healing and really annoying stall. This is probably one of the most prevalent comps I see in P Arena because not only does it work against like a whole bunch of like normie comps, it also works against Ilya comps, traditional Ilya comps. So let me make that clear. So I'm talking about like the double TP or the single TP charge. If you run your Ilya with like Saren, Yukari, Monica, uh, who was that? Kyoka. That's actually not going to work against this because like we all know Ilya as like the anti stall. However, although the Ilya can get past the Miyako and like really crushes her, the Kuka actually stops the Miyako and with all of the single target healing, the Ilya cannot actually get past her. And so you definitely need to adjust. And like if you guys don't believe me, let me show you guys. So guys, we are in PCRD fans and this is the stall comp that we are looking at, the Misato stall. And so as you can see, there is no like Ilya batteries anywhere. You don't see a single one, but you do see like the comps I'm talking about. So look at this one over here, the Jun, Kari, Makoto, Akari, and Kyoka combo. Obviously, in my opinion, the Kyoka can be subbed with like a Summer Kiari instead, but like you guys get the idea, right? So I am not talking out of my ass. Ilya being the only threat is just not enough to actually break through this stall. So guys, I'm just scrolling through the pages and I cannot see any of like the Saren Ilya combo or like the Yukari Ilya combo. I do see this one over here. However, you're missing a whole bunch of those other core units like the Monica and the Yukari and like the Nozomi. And trust me guys, this is not something that most people are going to be actually running blind into a P Arena team. All right, guys, let's go have a look at another stall. So I found these two stalls and these are actually really interesting ones because I hate fighting these offensive stalls as opposed to these like pure stalls over here. And I call these offensive stalls because they are like kind of like threatening these team members over here. And so as you can see, the Hatsune actually threatens like that Kari over here. And the Tamaki is also threatening like these guys over here. And so how exactly do we deal with this? So there are a couple of ways to deal with this. However, I see the Tamaki, I see the Hatsune, I know that they are targeted damage. And so what I want to do is I want to actually pick up my Kuka and I want to place him like right in the front of the team. And the reason I want to do that is because she actually is going to take a lot of those hits. And so it's going to actually provide a level of survivability for when I inevitably pick up like my DPSs. So like something like that, that, and like even that. However, the Kaori and the Makoto, if that Hatsune actually manages to like get off her UB, I'm relatively sure that they are going to die before being able to actually kill off that Kuka over there. And so this is where it starts getting a little bit spicy. All right, guys. Typically speaking, whenever I see a Hatsune, I actually put in a Yukari almost right away. And the reason I do that is because Yukari typically is going to provide that survivability for all of my units to actually break through this. On top of that, Yukari does have like the UB which protects from the AoE magic damage, aka Hatsune. However, depending on where she is actually positioned as well as like the gears at the time, Yukari might actually not be able to get her UB off before that Hatsune. And so therefore for a team comp like this, like she is going to stand over here and it actually might work. However, this team itself, I'm actually a little bit wary because I'm not sure if it can actually kill off that Miyako in time. It might, especially with like the defense down here and like the big physical DPS. But I think that there is another option here. So I'm going to take these two out. I'm going to move the Yukari to the front and then I'm going to actually bring in two archers. And the reason for this setup is because Yukari in this position is actually going to get Kyoka that massive UB off like right at the very start from the battery guide. And if you guys have not watched the battery guide, I really highly suggest you check it out. But essentially because everyone behind Yukari is a back unit, we are looking at Yukari TP boosting Kyoka for her first TP boost. And so what that means is that Kyoka is going to get the UB off super, super fast and hopefully crush that Miyako almost instantly. And so therefore, hopefully after that, we'll have the archers to finish off this Kuka and then we'll just like plow through the rest. And again, remember the Yukari is there to like provide a little bit of healing, especially with these two like chipping away at my freaking special units. However, if you do want to try like Unga Bunga it, I would actually try like running something like this. And this is essentially the same team as you're running above, but like hopefully, hopefully you're going to have enough damage to just plow through and so that Tamaki and that Hatsune is not going to matter. Honestly speaking, these days I would probably run something like hyper aggressive like that. I wouldn't rely on this Yukari. And it just makes me feel so much better because I believe that the Makoto and Kari combo it has a lot more physical damage than this over here. And so yeah, another option would be to try something like this, guys. However, otherwise I do seeing like this comp over here working as well. So if you guys remember like something like that or even like replacing 
replacing that Kyoko with a Summer Kiaru, so something like that. However, this is going to bring us to our last comp for today, and there are so many other stores out there. I actually wanted to talk about Rin Store as well, and I don't think Rin Store is that good, actually. And so actually, let me give you a quick TLDR of like if there was a Rin Store, but essentially Rin Store, like it's going to look something like this. I think it's like the Misato comes out and we actually get the Rin in, so get out of here. And so typically speaking, Rin doesn't actually provide that much, and I think it is probably one of the easiest stores to beat. Alright, anyway, back to this one over here. So when we actually introduce Ninon, Ninon is a massive, massive factor because Ninon crushes these frontal units. So the biggest reason why I am not running the Makoto and the Kari into this comp is because the Ninon is going to absolutely wreck them. And so that's why I turn to a comp more like this so that we can outrange that Ninon. And so outranging that Ninon threat means that we have a less of a healing requirement so the Yukari can sit out. Alright guys, so for this stall that is featuring Ninon and Tamaki, I've actually got this team comp up here. However, now that I think about it a little bit more, I don't think that this is going to work, especially because of the addition of the Ninon. That Ninon and Tamaki are absolutely going to destroy the cooker, and so I think we actually need to switch over to the Nozomi Monica combo. On top of that, I think the Yukari can actually come out because she is not actually doing as much here as she was before. Previously, we had Hatsune and Tamaki, which was focus damage, single target damage, right? However, now that we have a Ninon, it's actually more AoE damage. So whilst you could run an AoE healer, what you could also do is just use units which are outside of Ninon's range. And so that's why I've got this team comp down here. So what's going to happen here is that the Monica and the Nozomi combo are going to catch that Tamaki's first UB, hopefully. And then the Kyoka back here, after getting bashed by the Tamaki so much, he's going to UB at the Miyako. Hopefully the Miyako dies then. And then we've also got the two archers that are going to kill this freaking cooker so, so fast. And then after breaching their front lines, we are just going to maul the rest of them. And hopefully it's all gravy. On top of that though, it's really nice because our main DPSs are not going to actually be blinded by this Maho. Maho is going to blind the Monica. However, what we also have is the Nozomi taunting. So Nozomi also will pick up that blind sometimes. But again, our priority is in like these three damage dealers and they are going to hopefully be able to like nuke down the front line and then like mow through the rest. All right, guys, we've talked so much about store comps. Hopefully you guys have like a better appreciation or understanding of it. In my opinion, store comps are really, really hard to beat when you run into them blind. I showcase these store comps and how to beat them. However, I don't want to deter you from them. I personally think that store comps have such a massive place in the meta, especially if you blind hit them. And so whilst I did teach you how to like wreck them, you should also be like picking some of these, whichever ones you have and actually putting it into your blind teams in P arena. I'm telling you guys, I have like smashed into this Misato store comp like so many times and lost against it. But before we wrap it up, guys, I do want to say like my favorite store comps is probably like these two down here. Personally, I think the Ninon and Tamaki work really well, not only against the Makoto and Kari that I mentioned before, but also against the Ilyas, which you are going to inevitably see. Generally speaking, I'm just a bigger fan of these like offensive store comps rather than these ones over here. Because these pure store comps, in my opinion, like with absolutely no Tamaki or like Hatsune or Ninon, these are so easy to break if you just like throw enough damage at it. And so with that being said, I hope you guys learned a lot about store comps and so let's start wrapping up this video. Honestly, guys, I'm losing my voice again and this is probably going to be a really long video, so I'm sorry for that. But there is just like so much theory that goes into Arena, to be honest. All right, I've got a secret message for you guys and that is modern stalls. A lot of the Arena brackets are moving past like the traditional Tamaki stall and looking at these more modern stalls, I guess. And so if you guys could drop modern stalls down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it lets me know that you've actually made it to the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. Otherwise, please like, subscribe, comment. You guys already know what it is. And if you guys are looking for the Discord, it's in the description below. If you would like to support the channel, we do have some affiliate links down in the description below, as well as a membership thing in which you get like a badge and some cool emojis. But otherwise, as my mom once whispered into my ear, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.